We are doing a radio program of the last scene, scene 50, of uh, Reservoir Dogs. And I am Mr. Orange. Mr. Orange is bleeding out on the floor when we do this whole presentation. So on my phone here, I have the last scene script for the last scene. And uh, I can refer to it, and of course I'll be reading on it while we're doing it. All right, so, here we go. Well, good afternoon, everybody. In 1992, a young chap called Quentin Tarantino stunned the cinema world with his debut film called Reservoir Dogs. And nobody could believe that someone with very little resources and also very little experience could make a film so gut-punching and visceral as this particular one was. Uh, at the time, I was a film student, and uh, I would become very tired of uh, violent movies and cinema sort of glorifying violence and making them, uh, you know, a cinema violence, a, a cool, stupid thing, where uh, Sylvester Stallone or, um, or uh, Schwarzenegger would waltz through a scene, kill three or four dozen people with machine guns, and they all die, and there was no consequence. Suddenly in 1992, we saw real violence, we saw it in our faces, and we saw it in its sickening real form, and it was the most uh, 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 gut-wrenching presentation of uh, uh, violence that we'd seen, and it totally changed my mind about uh, using violence uh, in, a, in a dramatic sense in the cinema. So we're doing the 50th scene, the final climatic scene of Reservoir Dogs. Interior, warehouse day, medium shot on the door, nice guy Eddie, Mr. White and Mr. Pink walk through it, they stop in their tracks. We see what they see, Mr. Blonde lying on the ground, shot full of holes, the cop slumped over in his chair, a bloody mess, Mr. Orange lying at the cop's feet, holding his wound, Eddie, Mr. White and Mr. Pink walk into the shot. Blonde went crazy. He slashed the cop's face, cut off his ear, and was going to burn him alive. Who cares what he was going to do to this freaking pig? He whips out his gun and shoots the cop. You say he went crazy? Something like that? Worse or better? Look, Eddie. He was pulling a burn. He was going to kill the cop and me. When you guys walked through the door... Who's going to blow you to hell and make off with the diamonds? Uh-huh, uh-huh, what I tell you? That sick piece of shit was a stone-cold psycho. You could have asked the cop. He didn't just kill him. He talked about what he was going to do when he was slicing him up. I don't. I don't buy it. It, it doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense to me. You didn't see how he acted during the job. We did. Mr. Pink walks over to the cop's body. He's right about the ear. It's hacked off. Uh, let me say this out loud just to get it straight in my mind. According to you, Mr. Bond was going to kill you. Then when we came back, kill us, grab the diamonds, and swear that. That's your story? I'm correct about that, right? Eddie, you can believe me or not believe me, but it's the truth. I swear on my mother's eternal soul, that's what happened. The camera's over to a close-up of Nice Guy Eddie. You're a freaking liar! Now why didn't you dump the freaking fairy tale and tell me what really happened? He told you what really happened. You just can't deal with it. Okay, you're right. I'm lying. And even, even though I'm freaking lying, I'm not about pulling a fast one. Give it a blonde. We share his split. No. Oh, scratch that. I shot him because I didn't like his hairstyle. I didn't like his shoes either. If it had just been his hair, then maybe maybe I, I said I'd let him live. But, but hair and footwear together? Ugh, he's a goner. The man you killed was just released from prison. He, he got caught at a company warehouse full of hot items. He could have walked away. All he had to do was say my daddy's name. But instead, he shut his mouth, and he did his time. He did four years for us. He did him like a man, and we were very grateful. So, Mr. Orange, you're telling me that this very good friend of mine, who did four years for my father, who in four years never made a deal, no matter what they damn well in front of him, now 
side of his close-up and we see Joe Cabot standing in the warehouse doorway. He walks into the room. This man shut us up. D Daddy, uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what, what's really happening. That's okay. I do. The fuck are you talking about? That piece of shit. Working with the cops. What? What? I said this lump of shit. Joe looks down at Mr. Orange. Aren't you? I, I don't have the slightest fucking idea what you're talking about. Joe, I don't know what you think you know, but you're wrong. I tell I am. No, trust me on this. You made a mistake. He's a good kid. I understand you're hot. You're super fucking pissed. We're all real emotional, but you're barking up the wrong tree. I know this man, and he wouldn't do that. You don't know jack shit. I do. This rotten bastard tipped off the cops and got Mr. Brown and Mr. Blue killed. Mr. Blue's dead? Dead as Dillinger. A motherfucker killed Vic! How do you know all this? I'm so sorry. I'm a cop. Mr. White lifts his 45 with effort and places the barrel between Orange's eyes. It sounds this outside storm inside. We don't hear anything. We hear a bunch of shotguns cocking. Ready, motherfucker. Drop your gun. Mr. White looks up the smiles.
<laughs> That's so <sweet> clapping. <laughs> Apparently we don't have a lot going on here <laughs> during the uh, uh, shutdown. Okay, next week, Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the performance? Well done, everyone. That was very good. Were you impressed? Oh, well done, everyone. That was uh, that was amazing. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was uh, great. I, I know I was in it, but uh, I. I I just wanted it to happen, and well done, uh, everyone uh, who took part uh, uh, for getting hold of it, and especially well done, uh, thank you to uh, Richard for for putting us all along, and that was uh, really quite something, really quite something. Uh, I'll remember that. Wow. Yeah, I was in this um, in this lagoon once in St Martin, and then. 